Hey, hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Think Tech Hawaii studio. We've got an amazing episode of Security Matters for you today. David Symes chiming in from our friends up north in Canada. David, I really appreciate you taking some time to join me today. Um, we've all been through a lot of change, and I hope we can kind of get a perspective on uh, sort of the changes you guys have been going, uh, seen up there uh, north of the border. Thanks. Aloha, Andrew. Thanks for having me. Right on, man. No worries. So we'll give a quick disclaimer. I've known David a while back from his Cantaba days, um, but we haven't seen each other in quite a while. So I'm so glad to get you on here and have a chat, man. It was fun, fun catching up before the episode started. Um, we typically like to let our audience get to know you a little bit. Those folks who don't know you, um, you know, when, when we're all, we're in the PSA gang, I mean, you were popular in there. So I don't know, um, we haven't seen you around that group in, in a while. I don't know if you guys will be back in there or not, but um, maybe take us, um, for our audience who don't know you, you know, sort of your history in, in the industry and then how you've evolved up into your current role at um, Paladin. Sure, yeah, I don't know if that I'm any more popular than I was back then, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I'm a computer engineer by profession. Uh, I kind of started in the, the wireless uh, carrier space. So started with like paging and then moved on to the voice and data uh arena and did system engineering there and project management end up in, in research and development uh inevitably uh and then just kind of life changes happen and i i needed to find something different so i, I ended up uh you know just looking around and, and somebody tapped my shoulder and got me into physical security so that's 13 14 yeah. years ago now and uh and what a ride man it's it's awesome I, I just love like i've always been a technology guy and and you know invested heavily in, in learning about business along the way but um you know the 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 wireless carrier space is, is super sexy like you know trying to get the the capacity of these mobiles connected to, to base stations so you got like awesome uh data speed and resilience on on your mobile phone out there and and there's all kinds of technology attached to that but it, it was a very narrow technology evolution so so there's just certain segments of the technology would evolve whereas physical security has just been you know <laughs> you, you got all the field sensors that are evolving independently you got cameras you got these weird sensors you get network technology evolving independently you got server compute uh storage capacity increasing you got uh you know analytics uh you get the software feature set all all independently you know incremental uh, consistent improvements that that uh, just kind of this wave of 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 uh, evolution that you get to experience in this industry. So it's been it's an awesome awesome ride. Yeah, and, and today it's sitting up up there as the EVP. Now you guys scale across all of Canada. So this technology delivery is it is it a regionalized? You know, as far as the systems that are out there, do you see more you know video in the in urban or is it? I know you guys have the oil stuff up north you got sort of different industry segments healthcare um is is the technology growing in each of those sectors sort of equally or or do you see you know favorites or, or certain things in certain sectors that um are sort of different yeah it's it's hard to pick a winner i would say um in <laughs> and and where we've had success and where we continue to grow is anywhere there's complex needs so you, you know you've got a large environment complex environment uh, a lot of subsystems need to talk to each other, um, you know, high, high level of uh, security, large number of assets, large number of people. Um, that's where we're, we're, we're going in and, and, and seeing success. And, and it's so just a broad, broad spectrum of industries, but, uh, you know, critical infrastructure is, is uh, you know, continues to be a big one for us. And, and just understanding that it, the, those, those industries really well, uh, but, you know, healthcare, enterprise, business banking, um, you know, they all kind of have some commonalities. And, and so, you know, our our structure is is around kind of a regional focus so that you know we have local leadership for you know talking to customers and delivering um so, so there's an accountability there and then and then but collaboration is really important for us so as the, as the business scales gets larger it's always about tapping and finding the right person uh to to tap on the shoulder to bring them their competencies to bear on a problem or their, uh, to to uh, bring a solution to the table and uh and so really uh flexibility and collaboration in the structure is is always been you know key to 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 that success yeah and and so the uh, i know you you guys are over a thousand people now so you've got a whole lot of support when you have problems that you need to address did you see a a, a much of a shift or what kind of shift did you see sort of pre-pandemic to during pandemic to maybe Talk about, you know, externally, you know, the changes that maybe we should start to anticipate going forward. 
Yeah, you know, I think from a fundamentals perspective, like just that collaboration piece and then, you know, not putting up artificial barriers, unneeded barriers for mm. people to, to, to talk or, uh, you know, apply themselves to a problem or, you know, come to a team, um, you know, that was even more important as things get sh got shut down, like as the, the wave, the tidal wave of COVID came across and, and things were shutting down. Um, it was like, well, just, you know, how do we, how do we solve the problems of the day? And usually that's, you know, by finding the right people. And then, you know, as, so as things progressed and we've kind of exited that it's, it's uh, now we're just leveraging kind of all these, these tactics and, and, and uh, kind of learned behaviors of collaborating. So, you know, teams, uh, zoom meetings, like just, Picking up the phone a lot more often has been a lot uh, brought a lot of uh, improvements to our, our capacity uh, overall. Yeah, I think the the communications piece caught everyone off guard a little bit, but now it, it seems to me that everyone there's a, like a higher expectation of communication, and it, it's not that handshake, it's not that hug, you know, it's not that yeah. that um, the personal piece, but information should still get transferred, yeah. you know, with these, you know everybody just learned that it's available and it works. And so I, I don't know, was, um, was, uh, you, did a lot of work that, uh, was done maybe in person move to sort of remote for your customers? Did you find did you guys had to, you know, internally set up to support uh, that type of interaction or, or, or how did that go for you? There was a small shift, but I would say the majority, we were already doing what we could remotely um, ah. from a secure perspective, like, um, you know, and we were always, um, a proponent of, you know, quality control requires some, you know, bench building in the shop. So like even like what we can do in the shop, we want to get done, tested and, and, and vetted in, in, in a controlled environment before we, we, we get it to the customer site. So, so we always kind of loaded that stuff. Um, it, it's centralized, right? So, and then, and then, um, and then we've, we also specialize the roles. So, um, you know, the guys doing the, server, uh, compute storage, um, networking or, or, you know, fundamentally just focused on that and the software layer. And, and they've always kind of just, it's been way more easy to have those guys working remotely generally. Um, mm -hmm. you know, there's obviously situations where you have to be, be on prem and, uh, and they will be on prem for that, but, um, yeah, no, I think, uh, so, and then, you know, tools wise, we're pretty ready to rock, you know, we just, just, just happen to be, you know, growing enough. We're at 20 some offices now. And, oh, wow. um, and so the, the, like tons of, tons of r remote uh, communication already. And, and, and it just, you know, the platform was kind of there and then, and our, our collaboration components like document management, stuff like that, that was, it was already there. And now it just like, flourished in, in, in COVID times. Yeah. It's amazing. Them. So, cause there's, um, some distance challenges to your offices, right? With 20 offices, you're spread over thousands of miles up there. Um, so ha having that capacity or the understanding of how to do it remotely, I I've heard a few people tell those stories that had, you know, that remote office, they were kind of already ready to go. So there wasn't that huge shift for them or their customers. Um, what about um, the, the, the pressure of COVID on the, like that, um, the sort of that deliverable aspect of your operations, right? Where, you know, guys, some, some people have to come in and build the kits and get the gear ready to go mm -hmm. to be deployed, do the bench testing and all that. Um, did, did, was there a slowdown in that type of work for you guys? Was there, was it difficult to bring people in, for example? I, I, I don't know what, how it was up there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, depending on the jurisdiction, the lockdowns were, were mm. fairly rigorous, you know, um, we're delivering on critical infrastructure. So essential services. So we, we kind of had a pass on that, but uh, you know, just there, there wasn't an acceptance to, to mobilize in a lot of spaces. Um, you know, there, there's remote, the, the, like the camps work that we do, like they were, they're very concerned about having outbreaks. So, so they really restricted our access to, to go there. Um, so, but I, I think it would have been similar to the, to the, to the state's kind of experience of, of like, you know, jurisdictions locking down and, 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 you know, at some point you had to furlough employees and, and, um, because you just, you couldn't deliver anymore, but then it, it kind of, it ramped back up pretty quick, we put in all the safety protocols. We, you know, very, very rigorous around the health and safety of our people. So, um, we got them back up and running and, and, um, and, you know, we've, we've had a pretty good ride since then. Right. And, and we're coming out of it now and it's, it's, it's super exciting. Yeah. I, um, you know, can you, from the, 
from the deliverable side of that house, um, from technology deliverables, um, I don't know, did you guys get hit with like, um, we had like banks that wanted to open back up and they wanted the thermal stuff in there to help their customers feel good. Not, not really, not knowing that it's not really preventing any exposure per se, but to make the customers that were coming to their places feel better. Um, yeah. Did you guys get requests for technology you weren't familiar with yet and had to, had to vet out some new stuff for deliverables for people that just had that sort of demand? Yes. And I, I say, <laughs> you know, almost everybody was in that kind of scenario in some mm. form or fashion. Um, and we got it. Um, we were really, really cautious. Um, we were, we said, we looked at, you know, the technology, uh, the, the, the proof side, the outcome, the results, the data. And, um, and it was just like, oh, this is the wild west. And we went from like five suppliers of this to a hundred and some suppliers of these things. And like cost just range from, you know, all over the map. And, uh, and, you know, so there were some areas where we implemented it and it was effective and it was, it, it made sense, but there's a lot of, we're like, eh, like tap the brakes, tap the brakes. And then, you know, well, now that's history and, and who knows, right? Like the next, what's what's the next pandemic or the next critical uh you know thing to hit our place where we gotta adapt the good thing is uh like we've always focused on open scalable flexible platforms so mm. uh, we want to be able to plug some other technology into that your, your existing technology you want to be able to evolve it if one of your manufacturers takes it on the chin falls down whatever you want to be able to segment that chunk of the technology out and evolve it and, and 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 keep you moving so so that was helpful i mean we did we did have uh some you know fundamental flexibility in in the technology we we're delivering to to adapt to that yeah it seemed that the um the end users let's just call them end users were um, not as aware of, of visitor management, right? As, <laughs> as all of a sudden they're like, oh, because I'm like, look, what are you going to do with this technology long term? Was kind of my thing. Like, it's got to be able to your point evolve. Yeah. And uh, we, now we've seen that this stuff still sits there, and they're, um, you know, they're asking, you know, have you been the, the question? There was these five questions you had to ask, right? Do you have a temperature, blah? But now it's like, have you been vaccinated? And if it's no, then the the thing's smart enough to see if you have your mask on or not. So it's kind of funny mm. how it's it's changed um yeah. a little bit but they're they're still there they're just doing a different function which i thought was kind of interesting um yeah. you think we'll see a, a long-term impact in the sort of the, the the visitor management technology piece of our business going forward so that people don't have to ramp into it next time there's things already there that will uh make them effective to manage um you know requirements for visitors yeah, I think we've kind of chiseled away at some of the fundamentals. I mean, beyond deploying some some kiosks and just having that infrastructure out in the wild and some, you know, use case, you know, like just just funneling people through the right places and, you know, remote reception and stuff like that. Like, so we're we kind of like trialed that out and built some fun fundamentals. Um, you know, I think, you know, mobile check in for visitor management is is going to be continue to be kind of a growth you know, because it's super flexible and you can kind of deploy it, deploy it as, as you want. Um, so then it's, you know, getting the back end systems to work and kind of amalgamating those those records together. Um, yeah. You know, I think at some point, hopefully we get some some analytics value out of that data as well. So you got like now you're just it's not just a card read coming into that um, that system or whatever, or, you know, a visitor record. You know, we got other data, um, you know, can we be preventative in some form or fashion to the health of the business or, um, you know, restrict some accesses, access or, or even just see some trends to, to, to some of these things going on when people access our environment. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. Um, and it's funny that the, some of the privacy concerns just went out the door all of a sudden because we had a different priority. Right. So I was kind of uh, like, I thought that was an interesting, um, but it, they were there, but they took a, a, a lower tier than they had prior to that right so i thought that was kind of interesting oh hey, it's, um, a, it's a looming sort of damocles hanging over your head like the pii stuff uh and, and all the stuff that's been tracked you know where, where is that sitting today and and is it protected and and the regulations and laws are getting and, and the fines are getting worse um so or you know more strict so yeah it's concerning yeah there's this balancing act that got um kind of thrust upon us all um, so we're about midway through. We're going to pay some bills. Pay, we're going to take a break for about one minute. We'll be right back with David Stein. Stick around. A 
Aloha. I'm Mitch Ewan, host of Hawaii, the state of clean energy on ThinkTech Hawaii. Hawaii, the state of clean energy, is about following the many clean energy initiatives in Hawaii. Hawaii, the state of clean energy, appears weekly on ThinkTech Hawaii at 4 p.m. on Wednesdays. Thank you so much for watching our show. We'll see you then. Aloha. Hey, welcome back to Security Matters. We're talking with David Syme of Paladin Technologies coming to us from uh, Edmonton, I believe, today. Uh, David, I really appreciate the insights on the, the, the pandemic and the changes to our industry that you guys you know, went through up there. It sounds, to your point, kind of similar to what we went through down here. Um, internally, you know, I, we are a small, you know, I'm in Hawaii, right? We're like a kind of a, our, our little show here. Um, and we do know what some of our other integrators went through, but um, internally in Canada, you guys were are already a large company spread out, you know, across 20 offices. Um, how um, how were things functioning sort of, you know, 2019-ish, you know, I think the industry was kind of growing. And then when the pandemic hit and then, you know, coming out of it, well, what sort of changes internally, you know, struck you the most or um, do you think you guys learned most from? Uh, it was it was really uh, doubling down on the co collaboration piece. Um, okay. So, and, you know, not to knock small business, you know, I was in one, we're able to, you know, punch above our weight um, and, and it's, you can deliver absolutely. Um, but as, as you grow and you, you know, geographically you grow, uh, we kind of entered some adjacent technology markets as well as, as we've grown. And, and through that, the breadth of your team and, and the depth increases. So you get this, this growth overall. And, um, and then, so now you have different resources to pick and choose on to help solve mm -hmm. problems. And, and that just kind of compounds over, over time. So, you know, 2019, you know, that was where, you know, it's hard to look into the rearview mirror and, and see what you're actually thinking, but, um, you know, it was steady, steady forward. Um, now, like, we've just got a booster shot with the, you know, post COVID proving out some of the, the, the collaboration efficiencies related to collaboration, but also just the, the applying ourselves better to, to, to these environments. So. That's awesome. Did your team, did you guys pick up? So some teams were having like uh, happy hours on zoom and different, you know, activity games. There was jeopardy. There was, I heard of so many interesting things to sort of keep teams engaged and, and units engaged. Um, did what, what happened uh, for your folks and who, who sort of led some of those ideas? Oh, so it was, yeah, and it's, a lot of it happened, uh, naturally, um, ah. we're, we're just missed each other, right? You know, you're, you're traveling across the country, seeing all these people and, uh, Hey, we gotta, we gotta catch up But you know, like everybody, I think zoom meetings and, and teams parties were, uh, got old pretty quick. Um, <laughs> you know, the, the, the vendors would kind of push those along and, and oh, kind of okay. maintain them. Right. So, so you still kind of, uh, you got, got connected that way, but, uh, you know, the, and our HR department did a, an excellent job of kind of oh. uh, doing, doing some things. So, so they put on a, a competition for, you know, um, if you publish your, your, your personal exercise every day and, and oh, wow. you, you submit all these ballots and, and you got to take a picture of it and they publish it on the, on the, on our internal website. And, you know, the winner would win this, uh, this, this Peloton bike. It was really cool. It was, oh, uh, it was awesome. Wow. So it really engaged everybody to see what they're doing in their personal lives and also encouraging people to go, you know, get out and, uh, and try and be healthy. Yeah. Christine, Christine said the pandemic created hunks, chunks or drunks. And I know that you're, I know that you're a workout guy. So can you share with us what uh, workout you submitted? Oh yeah. I, I said, did some runs. Uh, yeah, okay. I did. I was able to squeeze out a half marathon for my first time. Uh, oh, wow. did one of those. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, just, you know, out on the lake paddling with my boys and, uh, yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. It's, it's been weird though, exercising, uh, you know, it, like it, changing your home gym over to a full-time gym was, uh, was weird. Yeah. yeah, all all those you know body weight. You and you're a weight guy, like all the body yeah. weight exercise. You're like really, but you know, actually, I found, I'm old, but I found I'm not very yeah. good at a lot of that. So it helped out. Yeah. Uh, who yeah. won the Peloton bike? Do you know? 
Uh, one of our U.S. guys down in California. So, oh, right yeah, on. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Christine brought one of those in, so I've been been hitting that pretty hard. We also get get out and ride as well. Um, so, what other sort of uh, initiatives do you think you know internally, sort of internal pressures? Um, you think there's anything coming to you, you know, from like a technology demand side? Like, did you get? I don't know if you guys had to get everybody cameras or the nice USB microphones, or you know, I don't know what all you went through from a internal uh, change side, but um, could share some of that with us or maybe what you see might be happening going forward. Yeah, so so the bits and pieces of technology uh, infrastructure wise, um, you know, that kind of happened and it was like supply chain problems everywhere just to get a webcam, yeah. you know, and doing all that stuff. So we, so we got through it, I think, and and we're, we're probably set up like, you know, everybody's got a, effectively a laptop now. Nobody works on a desktop anymore. Like, so let's keep yeah. that flexible. And and from a cost perspective, it's it's good. So so I think the bits and pieces of the technology have, have kind of figured it's figured their way out, uh, reach some sort of plateau. The 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 other side is like the the, the infrastructure and cybersecurity and like the the, mm -hmm. you know, if you were able to maintain some sort of like perimeter on your network before you can't anymore and you couldn't during COVID, right? Mm -hmm. So all of that got fuzzy. So we were pushing, um, you know, data out into people's homes onto, you know, unsecured networks uh, even more and more and more, right? So that, that kind of just, that that happened. So, so I think the, like the big changes we're making right now are on infrastructure and just keeping us as flexible like we want to deliver to our customers like a nice flexible scalable platform we're doing that for ourselves our internal system so going through a bunch of change and pains along with it um so that um you know we can have easy to use flexible security um uh and 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 deliver the line of business applications to our people reliably um you know that's 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 just so important and then you know and just keeping that flexible so you know who knows what the next thing is but you know flexibility is key and cybersecurity is absolutely key yeah that um i think i think that's the one piece that that was broken for everyone initially right and and the uh, um the there were a few hiccups along the way with some of the bigger technology providers even right that we saw that had some some uh you know, vulnerabilities exposed. Um, did um, did your team by and large adopt? Did you have to ramp up training for for you know like, like ransomware and and you know in, insider threat awareness and that kind of stuff? That's a kind of one of the pieces I took on to try to keep our team aware of the stuff that might be coming at them because the criminals didn't rest either, right? They they yeah. kind of they took a little break and then they came out like fiercely, right, trying to attack us. And so I I, I don't know if you guys saw that up there. It was pretty ugly here. Yeah, totally. I mean, training and awareness is, uh, you know, ever, you know, could ever be improved. Um, and with growth, you know, you got to kind of uh, manage that. Um, so we we implemented some tools to, to help us as well. Some, you know, additional, um, you know, phishing um, uh, resilience uh, in, in from an infrastructure standpoint. Um, you know, we're, we've got further plans. You know, it's ever evolving. Trying to trying to move that that forward. Um, but you know, it scares me. Like the the fact that you know joe biden and putin were talking recently about uh like the first steps in some sort of geneva convention when it comes to cybersecurity attacks yeah. from a state level like why are we there right now why like oh my god we we have so many exposures um you know they're just recognizing now that hey you shouldn't probably go attack the other guy's um power grid because that could cause human suffering um but that that looks to me like okay now you're going to enable all the other businesses to be, uh, you know, that that means it's it's table stakes to go and go after all of the the non classified uh, yeah. industries, right? Yeah, and I, th I think that I think that perspective, um, a lot of people sort of miss that, right? Because governments like look, like let's let's talk about protecting each other or not attacking each other, but that does leave the rest of the world perhaps exposed, right? The rest of commerce. Yeah. Talk about Fortune Five, maybe, right? Or or, or maybe take the top few of those out, but they're, they're so big with so many endpoints. I mean, I can't imagine managing that mess anyway, but I mean, it's a great point that if the, um, you know, this, this supply chain risk management, all this stuff flowing into government that we're seeing down here, um, if, if the rest of industry, particularly security industry, right, we're supposed to be the secure guys. If we don't start to adopt these mindsets in our manufacturing and all the way through our own processes and integrated deliverables, 
you know, um, we could be part of that vulnerability problem that is uh, the attack surface expanding instead of yep. getting narrower. <laughs> yeah, you bet. So have you guys seen, um, are, your, are the major manufacturers um, that you folks use, have they been um, uh, coming to you? Are they, are they uh, waking up and getting, you know, into that, uh, hey, look, we've got some cyber assurance issues we want to work on. You know, we know we need a software bill of materials, hardware bill of materials. Are you starting to see that kind of chatter from them or are they still kind of quiet? You know, I think there's an improvement. There's definitely segments like manufacturers have definitely stepped up where, you know, those, uh, you know, uh, publishing their threats and, and communicating, you know, that that's that's, I think, improved because the the, the risk and the, the 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 perception piece there. And then the other side is, um, you know, they're uh, feature wise to enable, uh, you know, whether it's 802.1x or whatever, like those those are slowly coming to be commonplace in a lot of the endpoints and stuff and then you know just you know it's but it's slow uh incremental um compounding investments in this stuff in in all directions well they have to do that in the cybersecurity direction too and so you see these slow improvements but the bad guys are also doing slow improvements or <laughs> like jumps jumps forward um and, yeah, and then so the other thing is like yeah we have to be way more cognizant of our supply chain with the you know, solar winds and you know everything all the other vectors that are that are coming that are being exposed now it's like well you gotta you gotta put some rigor into your supply chain uh you can't just rely on you know uh, you know uh, them them promising you that they've 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 done the vetting you gotta you gotta see some results yeah that third party assurance is gonna become a i think a, a slap in the face for a whole lot of people that you know not only integrators but manufacturers the entire ecosystem is going to have to step up in a way that they've they've not been challenged to do you know we've i think we've made a lot of money for a long time doing what we do but we haven't done it as securely as we can and that security piece is going to cost us a little bit mm -hmm. uh, great stuff great insights there dave well i've got a got a few seconds left um what advice would you have for our industry folks out there going forward uh to um accelerate themselves out of this change i i mean uh Go back to it collaboration you know stay stay on the bleeding leading edge of what you can safely um and and uh you know open flexible platforms is is where you gotta in, invest in um so because the the future is is so uncertain as has been proved out recently that's awesome that's, uh, thank you yeah that's awesome dave thanks so much appreciate you taking the time to share with us today of some great insights be flexible out there, people. Who knows when the next change will be forced upon you? Dave, take care. Aloha, everybody. Have a great day. Aloha.